uh, I was ordered to destroy my my uh, precious best friend, which I'd brought from boot camp, and I uh, had the stock all re refinished and lacquered, and it was beautiful. And they told me to throw the bolt in the ocean and destroy it. And to get in line and march with the troops on down to the middle side from our position. That was the day following the surrender, the morning following the surrender. So we were left out there to dangle in the wind until, until, they, until we marched down and joined all the others. I felt that our officers were still in charge. It was their duty to perform whatever duties they could, even though they were prisoners, to, to maintain order and, and you know, do the best we could under the circumstances. We knew that our life would not be velvet. We knew that we, we didn't know where our next meal was coming from, and many times it didn't. But I think by and large, we all had this innate feeling that we we're going to make it, we we're going to come home. I can remember one comrade who said, he's from Kansas City, he said, there's nobody that can talk me out of the fact that I'll be survive all this, and no matter how long, no, no matter how long it takes, I'm going back to Kansas City. So that always stayed in my mind for many years, not to be discouraged. So I knew I was going to make it. I can say that now, but it was tough then.